Hey, I'm Sam and I do design, and in the video today, I am showing you how to make these blurry people PNGs. Using blurry people like this in images has been fascinating for me for a long time, and I think it adds a great sense of scale and a great sense of personality without drawing attention to the people that are actually walking through. Usually these photos are taken with a really fancy camera where you can set how long a photo is being taken for, but I decided to try and recreate this digitally so you can drop these blurry people into any scene that you might have. The first thing I tried was actually using my own living room as a studio to get some photos of me walking in front of my camera, and I realized that it would actually be really difficult to cut out the background, especially where things are blurry around my feet and where the bottom of the blind finishes. I found this website Render People and it has a free download of a man walking and that is the exact type of thing that I needed. But I also downloaded a rigged model, which means that it has a bone structure in place, but doesn't have the animation. I wanted to be able to use more than just one person walking. So I used this rig model to try and replicate the walking movement that was in the free download. I used Blender to do this and I am by no means a Blender expert, so I really just fumbled my way through the program trying to match up the animation between the rigged model and the person walking model. Eventually I got to a point where they were both walking in a similar way and even though my animation was a little bit jittery, it really didn't matter so much because we were going to blur it out in Keyshot later on anyway. But then I realized because I'd based the animation on the existing male walk, the female that I was animating had a similar sort of style and that became too masculine for the type of render I needed. So I went back to the drawing board and I found this example image of a Paul Coxedge Studio art piece. Uh, Paul Coxedge Studio is a company that I used to work for. I didn't work on this art piece, but I quite like this image anyway. So I went back into Blender and tried to recreate that movement and the foot is still planted firmly on the floor. So that is the bit that won't be blurry in the photo. The next thing I did was export that file as an Alembic file, an ABC file. And you can see here, we've got start frame, end frame, the transform samples, geometry samples, shutter open and shutter close. Now what these settings are going to change is how blurry or sharp each individual frame is going to be exported as. For example, without changing any of these settings, Blender only exports each individual frame as a perfectly static piece of geometry. But we need to have motion blur in between the frames. So changing the shutter open and shutter close tells Blender to export it, referencing both the frame before and after. And changing the geometry and transform samples tells Blender that it needs to fill in five or 10 variants in between each frame. So once I exported the file, it was time to bring it into Keyshot, which is my renderer of choice. And we just need to make sure that we have deformable meshes turned on. That means that Keyshot is going to read the data exactly as we need it to. And once it's imported, we can see that the animation is working. From here, it was all about trying to line up the whole animation with just one frame of Keyshot. And we can make sure that the motion blur effect is applied in Keyshot using this symbol here. With that, I just needed to apply the UV texture that was supplied with the original download. And because we're going to be rendering this as a PNG with a transparent background, I added in a ground plane and then changed the opacity to occlusion and inverse color. That means the ground is only going to be visible where there is a really harsh shadow and anywhere else is going to be completely transparent. I made sure that the scale was exactly the same scale as it is in real life because that makes Keyshot more realistic with the lighting. And I made sure that ground shadows was turned off so we don't have that weird square in the bottom. Next, I set up the camera and made sure that the camera was roughly at eye height. I made the background a dark gray to try and match the clothes as best as possible. And the reason for that will become clear in just a little bit. And then I made the lighting environment and tried to make it really neutral so that it will be easier to match with any photo we put it in in the future. And with that, it's time to render. I set it as PNG and I included the alpha transparency. I included the clown mask, but it's not really important. And apart from that, that's the only settings we need. And with that, the rendering process is finished. Now I'm just going to show you why it's so important to add in a dark gray background in Keyshot before you export. Essentially what Keyshot is doing, if there's any sort of motion blur, is blending in part of the model 
with part of the background. So if you have a white background in Blender, you can see that if we put this image now on a dark background, you can really start to see the outline. However, if we have a medium gray that matches mostly the clothes, then you can bring down the color a lot more in the background and it's gonna look a lot more natural. The difference between the white shadows and the black shadows is what we need as well. Don't forget that you can download these images if you want to use them in your future renders and you can find the link at my website in the description down below. So there it is, that is how I made these blurry people in Keyshot to use in future renders to add scale and personality to any photo. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.